Hey guys, in this video, I will talk about the missing value imputation using KNN. And uh, KNN is basically K nearest neighbor. So let me put it in a presentation mode. I think control F5. Yeah. All right. So first thing is that it is an unsupervised algorithm for classification of data. So what does that mean? It means that uh, beforehand it does not have a very good knowledge about uh, the training classifier or an understanding about uh, the observations or the new observations that we are planning to give it to this algorithm based on where it is placed it will going to calculate and that's why it is called lazy learner also so sometimes an interview question that why knn is called lazy learner because it waits until the time it is until the time you are providing a new classification value and then it goes ahead and creates it so beforehand it does not learn anything it learns on the fly now the second thing is looks at the uh, nearest observation or the neighbor to classify the data so uh, once you employ this uh, knn algorithm which i will show you how you can uh, you basically specify the how many nearest observations you need to uh, look at to classify an observation maybe one two three four i mean that really matters to a matter about how many numbers that we want to choose so uh, how to decide that well a rule of thumb is uh, you look at the square root of value so for example if you have 100 observations you will do it 10 or if you have uh, uh, let's say 500 or 1000 observation you do a square root of that and whatever number that you will get from that square root you will use as a started starting point and look at like uh, uh, 10 15 uh, values or number up and down let's say you get uh, 15 so you get as a square root of 225 right so you have 225 observation of you took you take a square root and you get uh, 15 as a number so you go back let's say up until 10 or 8 uh, on the downside and on the upper side you goes up to 20 21 or 22 maybe to look at whether uh, these uh, classifiers the number of classifiers uh, or the neighbors that you are basically picking uh, is, is sufficient or not or providing you the right value or not okay so more about uh, i will show you in the next in the next slide but third point is uh, it's a distance uh, based uh, uh, method that it choose like euclidean is a default one but you can have chi square and couple of others at your disposal which you can use all right so here is a quick example of uh, uh, from the visualization perspective so what we have is uh, two different uh, type of data which is represented by a blue circle and a red triangle right and now if we add one more observation so i'll just go back onto a normal mode and come over here and put let's say uh, this shape okay and if let's say uh, I will put it over here right then you will go ahead and say okay it's it's quite easy because it is surrounded by these values so it has to be a circle so what you do you convert this square into a circle and uh, put it over there and that's what this basically algorithm does whether it is a square whether it is a triangle it does not really know and that's why it is unsupervised and based on the how it is surrounded by the neighbors and as the algorithm also says k nearest neighbor based on the neighbors that on which it is surrounded by it classifies it so what i'll do is i will just delete and uh, and go ahead create a circle which is a blue circle because this is what it is here surrounded by the neighbors but what if if i have a shape let's say this uh over here now you have these observation as well and these observation as well and you can't really say whether this square should go over here or over here and that's where uh, this algorithm really comes into the picture 
and uh, tries to identify where this square should go and for that it starts looking at the number of neighbors that we provide so for example one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven or maybe this is another uh, uh you know some 14 values so for the sake of simplicity total observation let's say 25 right and if you take a square root as i mentioned in the previous slide uh, as a starting point then five observation is what we need to consider to classify so what algorithm will do it will look at one two three four maybe this five or this five so it will take the five observation from here and five observation from here and wherever uh, the value is nearer it will gonna classify that so looking at uh, this uh, particular uh, values it looks like this this one will go in the blue circle because one two three observation is very very near as compared to one two and third which is very very far so this way it calculates the distance of this observation from this 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 maybe this or this and five neighbors from here and wherever the value is nearer it will gonna move it or classify it okay by saying that hey you are a you are basically a blue category and that's how it basically classifies the data similarly if it finds let's say if i am putting this thing over here let's say this is the new classification so in this way if a new data point is coming over here then it will be changed into something called red and will be part of this category because this value is now nearer to this so this is basically a very very high level and uh, very easy uh, example of how this thing happens but internally in the algorithm as well this is how this entire piece is happening so to better understand about uh, this what i have is the k nearest neighbor algorithm within the R programming as well as within the tableau which i which you can use even within the python you can easily uh, use it uh, with the help of the sk learn scikit learn um, library so what i'll do is i will put this link and this link uh, in this video so that you can easily understand so once you have this identification that whether the value is nearer to this or nearer to this it will going to uh, classify it based on uh, what the value uh, what should be the value is and you will get your real value instead of missing value so this way if you have any missing values in your data set uh, where uh, the value is more of a categorical in nature then you can use the knn classification uh, for this as well as in case of continuous values also you can use uh, but i feel that in, in if i look at uh, the practical cases it does not give me a very good output because uh, we keep on running the algorithm and it gives all the times gives us a different types of results so be cautious when you are using with the continuous data i would not say a bad or anything but be cautious but in case of classification it it makes more sense so for example if you have categories of let's say different countries and if for some of the country it is missing then you can basically predict based on the values of the variable whether uh variable of your interest uh which which you are plotting over here or giving it as a part of a data to a knn algorithm that what should be the value of country and all of that in practical you can see it over here in the k nearest never example so i really recommend that this this particular piece is really attached to it as well as clustering algorithm over here which will provide you a practical uh scenario but this this video i mainly uh created from the perspective of the uh, I saying that how you would really uh, look at the k nearest neighbor algorithm for the imputation of missing values and as far as practical is concerned uh, you will look at those two two videos over here so that's about uh, you know uh, the way how you would impute the missing value in case uh, if you are having in your data set so in the in this video i had talked about knn in the previous video i had talked about uh, the linear regression method 
uh, which is basically helpful in predicting the value and uh, a different way of imputing the value as well as simple methods like uh, mean median mode or or a k complete case in the very first video which i had uh, posted earlier so so these are like the different methods and uh, maybe in future i will look at uh, uh, a couple of other methods in in these in this part of this series